Hello, and welcome to the 4.2 and 4.3 notes. Uh, this is a section about the first and second derivative tests uh, slash, slash uh, curve sketching. Um, and so one of the things um, that uh, we will do a lot in this class is the first and second derivative test. Um, and so the first thing I want to talk about are these definitions uh, of what's happening. And there's a whole bunch of crap going on that, you know, I just, uh, okay, whatever. Um, okay. Uh, this one is actually pretty important. Um, and we'll talk about that. So let's, you can read those if you want. Um, but let's talk about something, uh, where a function is either increasing or decreasing. And so, um, you know, what I know okay, is that, um, and let's talk about whether a function is increasing. So increasing, increasing functions, okay, um, the way I like to think about it is as we travel from left to right, Okay, the graph goes up, all right? So an example of that, um, an example of that is that, um, you know, here's an x-axis, here's a y-axis, our function goes like this, okay? Means that we're increasing. A decreasing function is the opposite, okay? A decreasing function is is as we travel from left to right okay um the graph goes down okay and so if i draw a little example that um you know, it's just going to look like this. Uh, the graph, here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, and the graph goes down like that, okay? So the interesting thing, and we can talk about this, is that um, our derivatives tell us some information about this, okay? So uh, the thing I want to talk about, I'm going to move over here and write it, is um, and basically I'm going to talk about what's happening here uh, in this corollary, Okay, um, and so I, I do want to say this, um, and that's if, okay, if the f, if this, if the derivative value, okay, is positive, okay, then our function f of x is increasing, okay? Another way we could say that is if f prime of x, if our derivative values are greater than zero, okay, then f of x is increasing, okay? And similarly, if I were to say that if f prime of x is negative, okay, then f of x is decreasing, okay? And another way we could say that is if, if f prime of x is, I don't want to say is, um, is less than zero, meaning it's negative, then f of x is decreasing, okay? And so uh, what I want to talk about here um, is I want to talk about that example that we've, that we've kind of been using all year long, uh, with the object being thrown in the air, and that's what this graph is, and we've kind of had a whole section of notes over this. But this is the perfect example of, of showing how a function increases or decreases, okay? And so um, what I want to do is just kind of take a look at this for a second, and I want to note that this is my function. I'm going to call this just f of x, and let me make sure that looks like an f of x. Um, so an f of x, and then this is f prime of x. This is my derivative f prime of x. 
Okay, and so what I want I want you to see here is not only on our derivative graph where we where the where we cross the x-axis. Okay, notice that we have a tangent line of zero. That's where we have a maximum. Okay, that's a critical number. Okay, but I do want you to see here that the values on my derivative, the y values on my derivative are positive here. Okay, so I want you to look at the function. Okay, the function is increasing. Okay, as we move from left to right, okay, as we go this way, the graph is going up. Okay, and then all of a sudden, okay, as, as, we, as we look at the values over here on our derivative, we notice that those values are negative. They're below the x-axis, and so they're negative, all right? And so our function then is decreasing, okay? Our y values, as we go from left to right, are getting smaller. The graph is going down, okay? And so this is a really good example of, of what exactly it is that we're doing. Okay, now what I want to do is, is actually show you guys what's called the first derivative test. Okay, the first derivative test. Derivative test. Okay, and this is just to see um, where we have maximums and minimums, but we use this concept of of looking at the sign of our derivative to see what's happening here, okay? Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to, um, you know, we have our function, say f of x is equal to um, negative 4.9x squared uh, plus 10x plus 5, okay? And so what the first thing I want to do is find our critical points. I want to take our derivative, so f prime of x, uh, using the power rule, is going to give us negative 9.8x plus 10. Okay, and I want to find our critical point. So uh, the first thing I want to say is, okay, is there anything that's going to make my derivative undefined? And unfortunately, there's not. Okay, what we have is a, uh, we have a line. It's going to go on forever and ever and ever. For every x value, there's going to be a y value. So um, our domain of this function, and let's go ahead, I'm going to write that over here, um, is that our domain, d, domain, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. We do need to, to clarify that, okay? But because we have a polynomial, because we have a parabola, uh, we are, um, we have, we have a function for every x value. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? So we're good on that. And so what I want to do is I want to set our derivative equal to zero, okay? So if I take zero here and set that equal to negative 9.8x plus 10 and solve this for x, <clears throat> I'm going to subtract by 10 on both sides and get negative 10 equals negative 9.8x. I'm going to divide by negative... 9.8 and divide by negative 9.8. And so we end up getting this. We end up getting that x is equal to just about 1.02, okay? And this is our critical point, okay? And so uh, this is going to help me. This in my domain is going to help me uh, to do the first derivative test. And so what I want to do is then make a table of values, okay? And so in that table, I want to do this. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make a column here. I'm going to write the word interval, okay? And then I'm going to write the, uh, the sign of f prime and then the behavior of f. Okay, and so what I want to do is I want to break up my x values into a bunch of intervals using my domain and using my critical points, okay? And so the first uh, interval that I have is that um, the interval goes from negative infinity to 1.02, okay? And then I'm going to break this into 1.02 to positive infinity, okay? So if I take a... A step back here. 
Uh, this x value right here, okay, is the x value 1.02, okay? And so I'm looking at the values on my derivative then between negative infinity and 1.02. I'm looking at these values here, okay? And when I look at those values, I go, okay, what's the sign of those values? Okay, and if, and if I wanted to actually plug in a number, if I wanted to, like, say, plug in 0 into this function... I would get a positive number, okay, if I plug in any x value into my derivative along this interval, I'm going to get a positive number, okay, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that a little bit later, but I have a positive values on my derivative. So then, what I know, based on um, some of these, uh, some of our facts here, is that if our derivative is positive, then our function is increasing, Okay, and we can just tell that from the graph because this is, you know, probably the most basic uh, derivative concept that we have, and this is the one that we understand the most, okay? And so, um, you know, I know that my behavior of f is that our function is increasing, okay? Now, if I take a look at the interval between 1.02 and infinity, if I look at that interval then I notice that my derivative values, my y values on my derivative, are all below the x-axis. They're all negative, okay? If I plugged in a number, an x value, into my derivative anywhere along this interval, it's going to give me a negative value. So I'm going to put that this is a negative, okay? The sign of my derivative is negative. Therefore, my function is decreasing over that interval, okay? And so, but there's a reason why we do this is because we kind of get a general shape of what's going on in our graph of the function, okay? And what we notice is that the derivative changes from positive at 1.02, we have a value of 0, to negative, okay? So what happens here is we end up getting a maximum value, okay, at 1.02. Okay, and that's the first derivative test. We're just looking at the, the actual value of the number and then determining whether, um, you know, we have a maximum or minimum, okay? If it went from decreasing to increasing, then we'd have a minimum, okay? And we'll look at a bunch of different examples here, but um, this is the most basic, basic thing. And so whenever you're wondering, okay, how do I do the first derivative test, draw this picture, Okay, and, I, and, it, and, and this will always make sense, okay? And remember how I told you guys that I can use this example to teach you everything in calculus, okay? As a bare minimum so that you can always remember how to do this, okay? So it's important that we, um, that we do this. We'll do a bunch of examples on how to do the table, um, but we can actually calculate this stuff uh, without using a calculator, which is pretty powerful. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. Uh, we're going to have a bunch, probably like four or five parts to this video. So stay tuned and buckle up because we're going for a ride.